Each year in the U.S., around half a million people get sick from the bacterium Clostridioides difficile, better known as C. diff. When you have too much C. diff in your gut, at best you get diarrhea. At worst, your colon swells, your kidneys fail, and you die. Here's the crazy part. Antibiotics might actually help C. diff kill you. And the thing that could save you is someone else's poop. Chances are you've got some C. diff in your gut right now. And you probably got it from eating poop with C. diff spores in it, likely from contaminated food. But you don't have a full-blown C. diff infection with diarrhea, fever, abdominal cramping, the whole nine yards, because other bacteria in your gut, the good bacteria, keep C. diff from growing out of control, both by stealing its lunch and by producing chemicals that inhibit the toxins it produces. But we'll get back to that in a second. Let's say you take a bunch of antibiotics, maybe for a strep throat infection. More than likely, those antibiotics won't kill the C. diff, but they will kill the good bacteria, leaving a nice, warm, wet place for C. diff to take over. So how does it do that? With two toxic enzymes, toxin A and toxin B. These two molecules transfer glucose, or sugar groups, onto enzymes called GTPases that your cell uses to do things like signal or divide or make protein. The essentials, really. This causes a protein called actin, which gives your cells structure and allows them to move, to condense. When that happens, your cells become rounded, as opposed to their normal, spread out, elongated shape. And this triggers cell death, destroying the lining of your intestines. All this leads to these great symptoms, and if left unchecked, maybe also sepsis, a scary, often deadly immune response to an infection that is spread through your bloodstream. If your body can't handle C. diff on its own, you might be given these molecules. C. diff-specific antibiotics like vancomycin and fidaxomycin. Vancomycin blocks C. diff cell wall creation, and fidaxomycin blocks the bacteria's transcription of DNA to RNA. So these molecules can help control C. diff in your system, but even after treatment, you'll sometimes still have a bit of it hanging around, just waiting. So even when you receive treatment, it doesn't mean you're in the clear. You may need to take those antibiotics again, and again, and again, which is the cycle that breeds antibiotic resistance, and that is absolutely terrifying. One solution is to introduce more good bacteria into your gut. There are a lot of different products out there, like kombucha or probiotics, that are being marketed to do just that. Unfortunately, there isn't any conclusive data showing that these will do the trick. Right now, we're discovering that your best option is probably someone else's poop. In more scientific terms, a fecal microbiota transplant. A fecal transplant is exactly what it sounds like. Someone else's poop, which has been screened for dangerous bacteria, viruses, you name it, is put into another person. The goal is to try and get those good bacteria reintroduced into a sick person's gut, to get it back to normal so that it can fight off dangerous bacteria like C. diff. Doctors can do this in a few ways. First, oral fecal capsules. This is the newest and often more preferred method. Second is the poop enema, where a healthy person's poop is put into an enema bag or bottle and infused into your rectum over the course of a week or so. Last and almost certainly least is the poop feeding tube option, where healthy poop makes its way in a tube down your throat and right to the intestine. Some clinical trials suggest that fecal transplants could be the superhero that cures C. diff, perhaps a pooper hero. One study found that patients with recurrent C. diff infection following treatment with vancomycin or fidaxomycin had a much higher cure rate after receiving fecal transplants compared to patients treated with only those antibiotics. And that's really exciting, not only because these patients were cured, but because it means we're reducing the need for antibiotics and that decreases the chances of antibiotic resistance. With all that said, fecal transplants have not yet been approved by the FDA and there are still some concerns. In June 2019, the FDA issued a safety alert following the death of an immunocompromised clinical trial patient who developed an E. coli infection following a fecal transplant. So although promising, there's still work to be done. Have you ever had a fecal transplant? And if so, did it help? Let us know in the comments and we'll see you next week.